Do you believe in miracles? Would you love to see a miracle in your love life? Maybe you're single and you would love to meet somebody. Or maybe you're in a relationship, but you're going through some rocky or really challenging times and you would love to see improvement. Well, it is possible. All you have to do is trust and believe. Hi, I'm Sherry Nichols, and I want to welcome you to The Miracle in You, a show that is dedicated to bring you hope and inspiration. We're talking to people from all over the world, having real life situations, dire diagnoses, relationship issues, really challenging times, and they've overcome them to really get to a place of thriving and a place of happiness. Today, I'm sharing with you a conversation that I had with love and relationship expert, Matt Boggs. He went through a time where he wasn't sure if he would ever find the love that he was looking for. And he's going to share with you the miracle of how that happened, as well as share with you some insights on the miracle of self-love. And today I am thrilled to have one of my good friends, colleagues, and mentors, the king of love, Matt Boggs, with us here today. Welcome, Matt. Oh, that's the first time I've been called king of love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to think about, you know, you are all about love and what's a good description. So you're to me, you're the king of love. You really embody it. So before yeah, we get here, here we are, we're talk, we're going to be talking about the psychology of men, and I think you're pretty safe with calling any man a king. I think you're going to get a response from that. <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> now let's talk about love with Matt Boggs. Uh, he is uh, he is a best-selling author of the Everlasting Project and the creator of Cracking the Man Code. And I have had the pleasure of knowing Matt for almost a decade now. And he honestly is one of my favorite people. He is so heart-centered and genuine and kind and caring and fun, very fun and charming guy. And you know what? His whole life is based on love. He, uh, he not only has studied this topic thoroughly, but he is the embodiment of it. You know, he, he has a beautiful marriage with a woman that he treats like a queen, adores her. He's a devoted father. He really walks his talk. And, you know, he is, um, one of the things I love about him, well, many things I love about you, Matt, but one of the things I really love is not only are you a fantastic coach, you are a, an incredible, phenomenal teacher. And, you know, you, Matt has this way of sharing his wisdom in a way that is very relatable, understandable, and doable. And so all of these, you know, wonderful attributes has naturally made him a very sought after dating coach and relationship expert. Matt's message of love and really practical relationship advice has impacted more than 12 million women around the world. So today, Matt is going to share with us three secrets of having deep, meaningful connection with men. Mm -hmm. But And I cannot wait to hear that. I don't know about all of you listeners out there, but I am just really can't wait to hear those three secrets, Matt. So before we start, though, I would love to have you share with us, you know, how did you get interested in this and the business of love? You know, what really motivated you to become a love and relationship expert? Yeah, I think that's that's a great question, a great place to start because <clears throat> reasons precede results. And so for everyone watching, for everyone listening, if you want to change something in your life, one of the places you want to start is looking at your why. Why do you want this particular result? Why is it that you want your dream? Why is it? What's the burning desire that you have? Because the reasons that we have, perceive the results that we achieve because anything that we want to achieve in life if it's outside of the result we've ever had before in other words if it's a new result we're going to need to push through some boundaries we're going to need to expand our comfort zone if you will so we're going to have to slay the dragon we're going to have to climb the climb the mountain that's in front of us you know i wish that life set it up so it was just nice and easy to get what we wanted all the time but unfortunately that's just not life right and the beautiful part about that is that it actually causes us to grow. Part of 
achieving the things that we want isn't in the getting the things we want, but it's in who we become in the process of achieving those things. And so for me, there was, um, I went through a big long period where I was really dissatisfied with my love life. I don't know if anyone can relate. Watching and listening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think just about everybody listening. <laughs> you know, like just completely dissatisfied where um, I wasn't attracting people. Like I was dating people, none of them I was really interested in. And then the couple of times where I did really find someone that I had that strong connection for, the moment I like poured my heart out to them or the moment I really opened up was the moment they rejected me and crushed my soul. and. Um, so I became quite jaded and quite tainted and have a, had a bunch of walls up and that wasn't working for me. And despite really wanting a connection, no, everything I was trying, it just wasn't working. And so I ended up deciding for myself, I won't tell the whole story. Many people have heard this story before, but just the nuts and bolts of this is that I, I caught a vision for what I wanted in my life and it was my grandparents' relationship. They had been married 63 years. It was a not always perfect, but it was deep, powerful, passionate love story to the point where when they were, my grandfather passed before my grandmother did, she's now uh, made her transition as well, but when they were both together, I mean, they were like two kids in high school, crazy in love with each other after six decades of being married and spending time with them. Um, before they made their transition, I really realized for myself that that kind of love story is what I wanted. And so it sent me on a journey where I loaded up an RV with my grandmother, who was still alive at that time, and my best friend and a documentary film crew, and we set out on a mission interviewing America's greatest marriages. I wanted to discover what they had to say. People who had walked the talk, what did they have to say about what creates lasting love? And what I learned from these couples, we interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of couples. We traveled around the United States, 12,000 miles in this RV, filmed the whole thing, turned it into a documentary. Um, and what, what I learned from these couples completely changed my life. So much so that on the very last stop on our book tour, we, we wrote a best-selling book, Simon & Schuster published it. So we're going around and we're on a book tour. On the very last stop on the book tour, I ended up seeing a very beautiful woman and completely shifted my approach, what I would have normally done and would have normally interacted in that, not just from the point of meeting her, but then in dating her, I completely shifted how I approached that situation based on what I had learned from America's Greatest Marriages and ended up um, getting her phone number, going on dates with her, ended up building a great relationship, and today we're married. And we have a beautiful daughter and another one on the way. So. Um, I'm very grateful for all of the uh, uh, insights and guidance and the couples who showed up to pour into me. And this is my passion. My passion is helping people increase the love in their lives. So for the past 10 years, after that book came out and, and I had the success in my own life, I had so many women saying, you know, help me manifest my man. How do I understand men deeper? How do I attract men? How do I connect with men? And so I wasn't... Um, really satisfied with all with my current level with my level of skills at that time so I went on and got a couple of coaching certifications and really read everything I could get my hands on around connection and became a student an in-depth student of human behavior human psychology what creates connection what creates attraction um, and and how do we foster that because I really feel like as human beings the deep need that we all have number one is definitely for love but it's that feeling of connection mm -hmm. and the feeling of disconnection when we're lonely is one of the most, is one of the worst feelings we could ever have. In fact, it's how we punish people the worst, right, Sherry? Like when we want to punish someone, the worst we punish them besides killing them, yeah. what do we do? Well, we withdraw, you know, we, we withdraw, but we imprison them. First of all, we separate them from society. And then of those who are in prison, what's the worst punishment you can get when you're in prison? Now, I know, Sherry, you haven't spent much time in prison. <laughs> so you might not know the answer to this. But being isolated. I spent so much time in prison for anyone watching it either. But you know, <laughs> what, what is one of the worst punishments you could get? Yeah, well, I think being isolated and being disconnected. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Solitary confinement. Yeah.
right? They lock you up. They even take you away from your cellmates and put, make you alone. You're going to be alone, solitary confinement, no light, no entertainment, no nothing, no connection. And that's the worst punishment. And what's interesting is that we will often do that to ourselves unknowingly, unknowingly or unconsciously or just with old habits that we will, we will create a result that's as bad as punishment. Many of you, you might have had the experience where uh, you know, you're laying next to somebody. Sometimes we can feel the most alone when we actually have someone in our lives, but we're totally disconnected with them. You ever been fighting with somebody and you're sharing the same bed with them and you're laying next to them and like they feel like they're a million miles away, it's, it's even though you're in the same the bed. Kind of loneliness. Yeah. Sometimes worse because you yeah. feel that disconnection. And so one of my missions is to reduce suffering in the world by helping people understand how to connect. How can we, can we expand our love, uh, the love that we give and receive in our life? And so that's what I've dedicated my life to. It's the most fun thing that I get to do. And so I'm very privileged and feel blessed to be with you here today and to talk with all you fine people um, who are expanding the love in your life. Yeah, I love that, Matt. I just, I love that mission. And, you know, um, you have you, as I said, you embody it. So I'm just so happy to have you here with us. And so ladies, take notes because I'm telling you, this man has a lot of good wisdom to share with you today. So what I would love to, act, um, after that, you know, you say you've been working with women for 10 years now. Is that right? Basically. Yeah. In mm -hmm. the love arena. What do yeah. you think is the biggest obstacle for them um, with connecting with men? So... I mean, outside of what you just shared about, you know, tendencies we have to isolate, but is there any other obstacles that we might do unwittingly that is creating um, this disconnection? Yes. Well, think about, so what causes us to isolate? What causes us to um, decide to throw in the towel? I'm not dating anymore. I'm fine being single. There's a couple scenarios that happen that cause us to to disconnect. So the question is, how can we reconnect with men? So let me set up the challenge. One of the scenarios is where we, we convince ourselves that life is good enough, that the pain of dating, the pain of going out, meeting men, um, being completely disappointed by these uh, guys who show up that aren't anything like their profile or, or guys who decide not to call you back or you know the whole all the all the pain that goes along with that dating process you, you know what it's not even worth it i'm going to decide to be happy and single and there's nothing wrong with that so if you're happy and you're single there's nothing wrong with that that's a fantastic life if that's true for you but what i find is that it's not always true i mean there are chapters in our life where we're absolutely wonderfully single and we're not even looking for anything and we don't want anything we're focused on our business or we're focused on travel we're focused on ourselves and that's great but we want to be honest with ourselves if we are um, making up a story that says oh I'm just gonna tell myself I'm happy and I don't want a relationship where deep down you do the authentic version of you does want a relationship and really what you're doing is just trying to protect yourself and so you lock yourself up in the comfy cozy condo you get the gallon ice cream and you watch Game of Thrones or you watch your favorite show and you just make you say hey this is what I'm gonna do so the um, so one of the challenges is how we relate to ourselves so the first the first step in how to connect with men is to really build our relationships with ourselves, and the first place to begin and I know this sounds cheesy and I know that everybody says this but I can't stress the importance of this and this was actually people wanted to pull the layers back on Matt Boggs and say hey what was one of the things that you did that really helped you manifest the love of your life it was this it was I finally learned how to love myself and it put me in a new state of loving. So I, I learned to love and accept myself. And I'll give you a tool at the very end of this uh, talk that will help you increase the self-love that you have. Because it's not something you do from your head. It's something that you actually do from your heart. But learning to be kinder to yourself. Learning to accept yourself more often. I know that many of us, we have the perfection syndrome. If we're not perfect, we beat the living crap out of ourselves. 
we beat ourselves up for the mistakes we make. We beat ourselves up for not doing this particular thing perfect or for not looking a certain way. And, you know, I know uh, many of us will, you're meaner to yourself than you would ever let anyone be to your best friend. Like if you're, if you heard someone talking to your best friend the way that you talk to yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror, right? You get undressed, you're about to go in the shower and you're looking at your body. Where do your eyes go? What's the first place your eyes go? You know, typically it's to the place on our body that we don't like and we squeeze and we pinch and we move and we pull and we try to move it around and have it look better, right? Is it... <laughs> <laughs> instead of and if we, it's, it's funny but it's true and that vibration is a vibration of being critical and so as we learn to love ourselves in a deeper way what ends up happening is a couple of things number one is we put ourselves in a vibration of love and like attracts like so if you want someone who loves you that's why learning to love yourself is so powerful because not only will you attract someone who is also willing to love you, but it's also someone who's willing to love themselves. There's a great song. I've never shared this before, but uh, it's a great song that I go into church. I used to hear um, Reverend uh, Ricky Byers Beckwith. She sings at a church called Agape in Los Angeles, and she has a song, and the lyrics to this song are powerful. And they, It goes like this. It says, I love myself so much that I can love you so much that you can love you so much that you can start loving me. And I love that because that is that is um, a great illustration of how this works, is that when we love ourselves so much and accept ourselves to the degree where we are willing to love our imperfections, we're willing to love the times where we fall short, we're willing to love the parts of us that don't quite measure up in our eyes, right? Where we might not look a certain way or might not weigh a certain weight or we might not have the skin that we want. Whatever it is, we're willing to love and accept and embrace those things. Then we're in that vibration of love and we're also in a vibration of accepting. And this is key. So listen, men, what we most want in a relationship is to be accepted for who we are. Because a man's deepest relationship fear is inadequacy. Actually, Sherry Nichols and I, we both got back from a, an event, Tony Robbins event last week, yeah. which was phenomenal. And I love what he had to say around this. He said, every human fear, can you can basically boil it down, although there are surface, lots of different surface level fears, fear of speaking, fear of heights, fear of cats, <laughs> lots of fears. But the basic human fear that we all have is the fear of not being enough. Because if we're not enough, then we won't be loved. And I love the evolutionary backing that he gave this because I'm a biology guy and I like to see, I love how our biology and our chemistry actually gets represented and reflected in relationships. And he said, if you think about it, all other animals other than primates, when they're born, they, develop into self-sufficiency much faster than we do. Some animals, when they're born, immediately they can walk, right? Or, and very quickly they can fend for themselves, they can find their own food, very, very quickly relative to human beings. Think about the amount of time that we are dependent on our parents or our guardian for survival. Mm -hmm. And so it's years and years and years. Some of you, you still have a 30-year-old son in your basement. And he's still depending on you for survival. <laughs> but for uh, so for us, this dependency on them for survival, we we equate being good enough with love. If we're good enough, then they're going to love us, and that's our survival. So it's this deep seated fear of not being able to survive if we're not seen, if we're not loved, mm -hmm. and if we're not good enough. So for men, if you love yourself and accept yourself, ladies. That's a vibration that we pick up on. That's a vibration that you can't fake. You can't be feeling critical inside, be feeling horrible inside, and put a smile on your face and go to that Starbucks date and just plaster it on and then pretend like you're having a good time. And we're going to, subconsciously, we pick that up. And when you are in a state of full self acceptance, there's a few amazing things that happen. Number one is that we pick up the vibration of acceptance. And we're feeling, wow, like we just feel 
that you could fully accept us for who we are, which is one of our greatest desires is to be enough for you as a man. Are we, do, can we be man enough? Can we provide for you? One of our greatest fears is inadequacy, not being enough in the relationship. So how do you help a man feel like he's enough? By knowing you are enough mm. and coming from that vibration. Yeah, I'm so glad so, that you brought that up, Matt. Yeah, really, really happy. So that's the first thing that happens. But what's another byproduct? When we love ourselves and accept ourselves, what's another byproduct effect that's a positive result that comes from that? Well, another positive result that comes from that is that we're not seeking love outside of ourselves from a source of scarcity, from a source of we don't have enough. We're actually, because we're loving ourselves, now we're in a state of what I call love abundance, where the goal is to share the overflowing love in our lives with, some, with another loving partner who's sharing their overflow with us. So both people are coming from a state of abundance and overflow rather than neediness and scarcity. If you're from, if you're operating out of scarcity, meaning there's not enough good men out there and I don't have what I, I don't have the relationship I want. I can't really be happy until I have this relationship. I mean, that's the bottom line scarcity, scarcity thought. I can't be happy until this happens. You're going to attract other people who are operating from scarcity because like attracts like. But when you shift into, no, I'm going to generate an amazing life. I'm going to generate a happy life and then share that life with somebody else, then what happens is you all naturally become more confident. Mm -hmm. You naturally become more outgoing. You naturally, when you go on a date, you're more relaxed. And when you're more relaxed, you're able to be more playful, yeah. which is more attractive. You're able to flirt better because you're relaxed. It's not like everything is riding on this day. You finally have a date with a great guy. And just like anybody, the more we get invested in, in somebody, the more we like somebody, the more nervous we tend to get because the stakes go up, right? Yeah. And anytime the stakes go up, we get nervous. And when we get nervous, we, we surrender the best versions of ourselves because we clamp down and we get restricted. You know, most of us, when we're on a date with someone that we don't like, those are the days where the most fun, we're the best versions of ourselves. Why? Because there's, there's no stakes involved, we're willing to just be free. We're like fully ourselves, right? So what's great is that when you're loving yourself, there's this feeling of safety that comes along with that, this feeling of sufficiency, this feeling of you're loved up from the inside out. And that way, when you go on these dates, you're able to relax, you're able to be yourself, you're able to be more confident, you're able to be more playful, and all of that is sexier, way more attractive, and leads to better connection. Yeah, that's, that's, that is so powerful, Matt. And the thing that strikes me about it that I love is that oftentimes women feel uh, disempowered, you know, when they're out there and um, not making the connections that they want. And what you've shared is that we really have the power to create, to turn that whole thing around, and it all starts with just creating an acceptance of ourselves. And in, in doing so, that then we'll be able to, uh, to allow men to feel that they're accepted. Because I think that's, a, that's part of it too, is when you're in a relationship, if, you don't, if you're critical about yourself, you're critical about somebody else. So. Yeah, is, well, and this brings us to, you know, we promised three secrets yeah, on here. So the first secret, secret is signal your man. When you talk about feeling disempowered, this is a perfect segue into that. Okay. Emp get empowered. Empower yourself. You don't really need permission from anyone else to be the chooser. But if you want permission from somebody, I'm giving you permission right now. Be the chooser. Be the, the woman who chooses the man that you want. You don't have to wait for him to come up and talk to you. You can actually talk to him. You don't have to wait for him to signal you online. You can signal him online. And I know what you're thinking right now. Some of you might be thinking, wait, Matt. But that's masculine behavior. I don't want to be masculine. I don't want to be the man in the relationship. I don't want to be pursuing him. I want him to pursue me. Yeah, no. That's what we're told, Matt, is that that is masculine behavior. So what do you do? Share with us what the what the what, so, what would that look like? So let me do, put put it this way. It's like saying this. This might be a stretch, but we'll we'll go with it anyway. <laughs> we'll try this out. The the recommendation. It's like saying the advice is. Eat 
breakfast. Is that masculine behavior or is that feminine behavior? Well, it's, it's well if you were imagine how a man is going to eat his breakfast. Now, I know this is a big generalization, <laughs> but how, how does a man eat his breakfast? Oh. And then how does a woman eat her breakfast? Yeah. Do you have two different images in your mind? Definitely. Okay, so whatever that is for you. Now, I could give the stereotypical man arm. Yeah. arm, arm, arm <laughs> exactly. He's going to eat his breakfast and the woman is... Do, do, do. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know, everyone watching, you all had different images in your mind, but the point is that it was the same activity with different energy. Yes. So you can approach a man with feminine energy hmm. or you can approach a man with masculine energy. You can reach out to men online with feminine energy or you can reach out to them with masculine energy. The, the activity itself is, is not masculine or feminine. How you do it is masculine or feminine. So, the, so step number one, if you want to attract more love into your life, Start with loving yourself. That gives you the courage to then signal more men. So, and we don't have time to really go super in deep to this, but I'll give you a couple practical things you can do. Okay, because I was going to okay. say, can you give us an idea of what somebody might say? Because there might be women listening who don't know where to even begin with that. Absolutely. Okay, so the first thing is to realize that the woman, uh, feminine energy is receptive energy. It's, it's, um, it's actually inviting energy. It's creating a space or an opportunity for masculine energy that's more driving energy. It's goal-oriented energy. It's, it's, it's actually more pushing energy to move into. So feminine energy creates a space. Masculine energy moves into that. So think about feminine energy as being inviting. So imagine the, the, the image would be you kind of calling him over to you. Okay, that's feminine energy. So the way that you can do that, which great is online, that simply looks like, um, <laughs> there's a great, one of my coaching clients told me last night, a guy who uh, reached out to her and um, used a line that women can totally use, this is great, but all you have to do is reach out to a guy with just one line, online, um, that says, wow, you seem really interesting, dot, dot, dot. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that's it. It's an open. Less, less is more. Be the chooser. Reach out to the men that you like online. Send one line. Men love to be interesting. By the way, yeah. One of our greatest desires is to have our thoughts respected. We love to be interesting. Dos Equis, you remember Dos Equis came out with the most interesting man in the world. Uh huh. Yes. That ad campaign doubled their sales. Really. That's how bad men want to be interesting. It doubled their sales. So, uh, so wow, you, said, you seem interesting. Really interesting. That's it. Wink. What's that? You said so. Wow, you seem interesting. interesting. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, That's you can say yeah. Wow, comma, you seem really interesting. Dot, dot, dot. Winky face. Okay. <laughs> don't say check out my profile and if you like it, respond. Of course, he's going to do that. Yeah. You don't have to state the obvious, right? Right. Uh, right. And and everybody says that. So the more that you can. Say just um, the more you can not sound like everybody else, but something standard that you think everybody would say, avoid it. Less is more. Another one is if there was an awesome button on your profile, I would definitely push it. <laughs> that is good. Did you make that one up? <laughs> no, no, I didn't make that up. What somebody, one of my coaching clients. This is the week we're working on online profiles. A guy, she wrote it based on the criteria that we were building, and the guy wrote her that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if there was an awesome button for your profile, I would definitely push it. Now, but you said the guy sent that to her. But yeah, but it, it could totally work the other, other way around. The other way, because obviously if he's saying that, he would love to hear, he would love to hear that too, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so basically, okay. So that's yeah. the first. So, 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 the that's, so that's online, offline. Okay. When I say be the chooser and invite him into your space, signal your man. Men, 95% of men are not approaching women. Really? 5% of men do 95% of the approaching. It's a small segment of men that do a huge amount of the approaching. Mm -hmm. So if you want more men to approach you, and this is why being self-love is so important because you come from this place of confidence, give him a big green light. Men, one of our greatest fears is rejection, not being enough. And so unless we have a big green light from a woman, and a green light means come talk to me. 
I actually already find you attractive. I think I might even like you, right? That kind of signal. If you're, if you're not getting that signal, then you're only making yourself really available to the small percentage of men who are players, who are, who are well-practiced at going up to women and don't have any fear about it. Does that make sense? So would that, what would that be? A smile? Would it be yes. a... So it's, it's holding eye contact. The biggest thing is holding eye contact with him to the point where you feel extremely comfortable. Okay. To the point where you feel... Did I say extremely yeah, comfortable? Yeah, I was going to say comfortable. Okay, maybe that's a couple seconds for most people, if that. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> extremely uncomfortable. Okay. Because the, the moment you start to feel uncomfortable, uh -huh. okay, that's the moment we start to realize, oh, she might be looking at me and not like somebody else. Uh -huh. is, and then we start, is she looking at me? Uh -huh. And you're holding that eye contact, yeah. right? And then giving a smile, like so that it's obvious. In other words, obviously flirt with him so that if there's no mistaking that you're putting yourself out there. Yeah, yeah. This time, right? Yeah. If you've got the guts to do that, your love life is going to be transformed yeah. just from that alone. So let's practice. Sherry, have you ever done this with somebody? Let's, let's practice this. I have done it, and I have to say it does work. So, yeah, it's been a, it's, it's, it's not something we, I do consistently. Demonstrate. You, you and I need to demonstrate this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have you ever done this in a video interview? No, I have not. <laughs> okay, first great. Mat. First time. Okay, so let's say you are, uh, pretend like you're in a cafe. We're, okay. we're, we're both at a cool cafe somewhere, okay? Okay. okay. And so turn away, turn away. Yeah. So you're not looking at me yet, and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, looking around. I notice you, I'm like, wow, she's beautiful. Uh -huh. Look at her, wow, she's, she's gorgeous. Now, you've got to signal me with enough eye contact, and I'll sort of give commentary of when it's enough, okay? Okay, so... Okay. Oh, my God. Wow, okay, that's enough. That, <laughs> that's that, a long how, time. Talking, that is a long time. Now, what you can do, what you can do to break up the stare, because people yeah. might think you only stare, it's like, a, you know, yeah. it could be awkward. It felt very it's uncomfortable look, to do that for that length of time. It's to look and look away and look back. Okay. It's more at the corner of your eyes, even better, like instead of like straight on, uh -huh. right? It's like look back and like corner okay. of your eyes. So we're going like this and then just kind of looking like that and then. Yes. Yeah. And then look back and hold it. No, that was too short. Hold it. Hold it. And yeah, smile and then look. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that is, we're having fun with this, but it's important to show like how long it actually takes for men to be like, I can, I'm going to go and talk to that woman. You want, that's a big green light. And right? ladies, it did feel very uncomfortable. So it's something that, you know, we have to pra you know, practice, right? And just, and just work our way through it because we're getting the uh, we're getting the advice from the love guru that that's what what works well and that's why self-love there's 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 something called social momentum uh-huh where the more you do this the better you get at this it's a muscle you know how do you build a muscle as we learned you, you got to stretch it you got to take it to the edge of its comfort zone and, and push past it and so in social momentum the more you do this, the better you get, the more comfortable it becomes, and the more men you're going to meet. And um, and so uh, I just want to put it out there that this is why self-love is so important because if it doesn't go well, there are gonna be, do you think there will be times that doesn't go well? Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I promise you there will be times that won't go well. And guess what? As men, we've had to learn how to deal with that because words, society has set it up. It's on us to do the approaching, right? And so that means we're approaching women who aren't getting us big green lights, and a lot of times it doesn't go well. Um, so the self-talk, if it doesn't go well, is really important to manage. So celebrate yourself for the action, yeah. not the result. Yeah. Celebrate yourself for just having the guts and the courage to expand yourself and to grow, not the result that happens from it. Right. Because you're putting your – so and it's called being outcome independent. 
You want to be independent? The best kind of independent is be outcome independent. Be focused on growth, not the result. And that's actually, ironically, going to lead you to much better results. Yeah. And I mean, it's it just the fact that you took the action is huge. You know, you're that much ahead. So celebrate that for sure. So, yeah. okay. So the first uh, of the three secrets is to signal the man, which thank you for all of that uh, very clear direction. And then what is the second secret? All right. The second secret is challenge your man. Oh, challenge the man to be the man you want. And how would you do that in a way that wouldn't uh, be masculine or uh, offensive to the man? Well, so uh, so here's what's highly feminine that most women um, haven't connected this idea. Your blueprint for your happiness. One of the one of the sexiest words a woman can say is W A N T. Want. This is what I want. When you say this is what I want, imagine that like an energetic opening. It's an invitation for a man to provide that for you. It's an invitation for a man to serve you. It's an invitation. So now we know we have a blueprint for your happiness, I call it. Every man wants to know how to serve, how to be a provider, how to generate happiness in you. It's one of our greatest rewards is that smile on your face. Yeah. Greatest rewards is the hug and the thank you. Way better than you giving us something is actually us feeling like we did a great job um, with you. So when you challenge your man, the easiest way to do this is early on in the date, dating process, even on date one, is share with him your standards and your boundaries. In other words, what do you want? What are you looking for? What kind of woman are you? What are you all about? Do you want a serious relationship or you just want to friends with benefits or just be casual? On, what, the, first, like, what? on the first date, you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. What okay. I'm saying is you don't have to bring it up on the first date, but don't shy away from it if it comes up on the first date. Right. And definitely don't skirt the issue, but, but speak your truth. If you want to be married one day, share that. Mm -hmm. You can't scare off a great guy. Yeah, so you want to you want to be very clear about where you would like to have happen in your life. Otherwise, you end up guessing and spending a lot of time that isn't serving you or your goal of being in a relationship, possibly. And for everyone listening or watching this right now, how would how differently would you behave if you really believed you couldn't scare off the right guy? Hmm, that's a great question. What would you do differently if you really in your bones knew? that you can't scare off the right guy, or that it's really hard to screw up the right thing. Yeah, no, that's you can't a screw great it up. question. Great Be, question. It would be yourself, you would communicate what you, you what you want early on, because here's what happens, when you communicate what you want, who does, who does that? Secure women, confident women, or insecure, unconfident women? Oh, confident women, I'm sure. Confident women, right? Yeah. And what kind of woman has options in her life, meaning has the choice of many men who are interested in her. A confident, secure woman or an insecure, not confident woman? Yes, yeah, absolutely a confident woman, sure. So, so hear this, there's a psychological influence trigger built into this. When you communicate what it is that you want, you're demonstrating your beingness is confident because unconfident women don't say what they want. They don't want to screw it up. They're, tipped, they're walking on eggshells. Right. Confident women, they'll blow it up because they got a lot of choices. So when you act like a woman who has a lot of choices, subconsciously as men, we understand, oh wow, she has other men who highly desire her. Mm. And a trigger called social proof kicks in. And we say, wow, if other men desire her, then I should desire hers too. But if you don't act confident, subconsciously is, oh, she must not have a lot of choices. Yeah. Other men don't desire her. Maybe I shouldn't desire her. Yeah. You see how that works? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's why that's why confidence is so darn magnetic. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense and you put it in a different term of what confidence really does for a woman. You know, it really sets her up to draw in a multitude of, an array of men, if you will, you know, so that she, <laughs> so that she really does, you know, she is feeling like she has a choice in her life and that she's not just settling for crumbs because somebody's taken an interest in her. That's right. And when you when you say your standards and boundaries, he know he now knows what it takes to be with you. And when he earns it, he values it. As men, we value what we earn. Yeah. If it's given to us freely, we don't value it. 
Right. So human, not just men, but all of us, human I, beings. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, so we have, that's the second one. First one, signaling. Second one, challenge your man. What is the third secret? Third secret is celebrate your man. Ah, uh-huh. So, so for, appreciation for, for, and all of that? Yeah, appreci- absolutely. Appreciation. Um, you know, we talk about connection. How do you deeply connect with a man? Well, and part of... Um, uh, well, we'll stick on. I was going to go back to challenge him, but we'll we'll move on here to celebrate your man. Um, remembering that what we want is to feel like we're doing a good job for you, right? Is to feel like like when we take you to a restaurant, it's not that we're just taking you to that restaurant. We feel like we have cooked the food. We feel like we've set the tables. We feel like we own this restaurant. We feel like we made this experience for you. So when you can celebrate the thing we're doing, I thank you for that. And this can be something small. Oh, babe, thank you for this dinner. This was so nice. I really appreciate you. You can celebrate us for that. Woo, we get this rush of self-worth that our worth as a man increases. And then two things happen. Number one, we feel good. And when a man feels good or special in your presence, you become special to him. Mm-hmm. When we feel special in your presence, you automatically become special to us. Mm-hmm. The second thing happens is that we want to continue to serve you. We want to then meet your needs. We want to pour into you because we feel celebrated. Dr. John Gottman did a great research project in marriage. He's one of the leading researchers out of University of Washington. And he talks about the five to one ratio that healthy relationships have five positive interactions for every one negative interaction, okay? So what would be a classic negative interaction for men? What's the opposite of yeah, celebrating well, or appreciating? Criticizing them. Criticizing them. It's the critici- it's criticism kryptonite, I call it. It's, it, is, um, it, it cuts into us as feeling like we're not doing a good job. So it doesn't mean you can never correct us doesn't mean you can never ask for what you want but in the way that you're doing it you can there's a lot of different ways to eat your breakfast so to speak right there's a lot of different ways to ask for what you want you can ask it with a critical tone help you know reminding him of all the other times he failed at this in the past and so on and so forth or you can ask it in a different way of what it is that you want but criticism and unsolicited advice mm-hmm. <laughs> so, just as a quick example. Yeah. Now, and I know women who are watching this are saying, what, can I never offer advice? What if I know of a better way to do something? Can I never do this? You can offer advice, and it's one of those things where you want to pick your battles, right? You want, you want to understand what results that's creating and that it oftentimes doesn't create more connection. But celebrating the things he is doing will create more connection and it will make him, it will drive him to want to serve you better and fill your needs. But oftentimes women, because you're programmed to make the world a better place, to make your surroundings better, you will naturally know better ways to do things and offer that advice to men. For example, a couple weeks ago, I was doing the dishes and I was loading the dishwasher. And my wife said, hey babe, um, it's actually better if you load the dishwasher from the back to the front, so that way uh, you know you don't have to bend over and get in there. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, and I know this stuff, but still, as a man, I'm programmed that in my mind I thought to myself, that is a good idea. That does actually make sense. That is a better way to load the dishwasher. And at the same time, she's not even appreciating that I'm loading the freaking dishwasher. She's just coming in with something better to do. Like I'm not, in, but it was really funny internal dialogue, and I had to choose the, the way to receive that message. And oh no, she's just trying to support me. She's trying. She's just trying to help me. But the but the part of me that wanted to that feel like I was doing a good job, and instead was told I wasn't doing a good enough job. Listen, I'm not good enough. Yeah. That classic fear that we all have when you give unsolicited advice. It, it connects right to the I'm not good enough. Exactly. Fear. Now, Matt, is there a way that she could have said that that would no. have not triggered you? Or you're just oh. saying in general? not in to, Ever, not. ever say anything. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, there is, there is a way you can, you can make a suggestion. And so um, 
And oftentimes, so what's great is when you're in a relationship, this is when I talk about celebrate him, you can do that early on in the dating process, but you don't want to lose it. And both people, husbands, we should be celebrating our wives, boyfriends celebrating our girlfriends as well, pouring into them, cherishing their feelings. This isn't just one side of, you know, I'm, I work with women, so we're talking about that side of it for now. But um, yeah, she can absolutely say, hey, can I make a suggestion? Okay. Can I make a suggestion? Just that one step, if I say sure, now I'm connecting with her. Now I'm open to receiving it versus just, you know, right. launching in with a criticism or launching in with here's how you do it. Another way to do it is just preface it, the five to one ratio. Hey, babe, I love, thank you so much for doing the dishes. I love that you're loading the dishwasher. And can I make one suggestion that might make it easier? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's a completely different way to receive it versus just hearing, yes. um, you know, hey, load it from the back. It's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> right. No. It, it's, and that's what I think is very helpful because I think what happens is that women, we, we have so much, you know, not that men don't either, but women tend to be, you know, they have a ton on their plate, especially if they're moms and they uh, have businesses and they're doing quite a bit. And then we tend to just be, you know, going along like this and instead of, really consciously thinking about how we're saying something because especially if you're a mom you might be giving that directive to a child you know and so you you know to flip out of it but I really appreciate that you're giving that suggestion because I think that it would it's kind of like you know preventative right I mean it it absolutely prevents any disconnection and discord in the relationship if you just take that second to consciously say something that you know will be received in a, a better way. Yeah, and if you're wondering when to say something or when not to say something, if he's not going to hurt himself or anyone else, and he's doing the job, yeah, just let him well, do the job. Yeah, I, you and, know, yeah. I tend to agree. I know when I was married, I would just, you know what? Okay, it's great that you're doing it, so I'm not even going to say anything <laughs> to it because truly, I mean, I think that the thing that women don't understand is that men are. Um, sensitive as well we don't tend to see it because of the you know the bravado oftentimes you know but but oh, men are yeah sensitive. very yeah very sensitive so that's awesome so you've given us so much great information Matt you've given us uh, you know wisdom about really accepting ourselves so that we can show up with more confidence and be more accepting of, of men and have more choices in our life and feel empowered in, in that and not feel needy or that we have scarcity going on. You've given us uh, the three wonderful secrets to making that deep, meaningful connection to men. First, signal them, then you're going to challenge them, and then you're going to appreciate them, as well as many other things. One last question. What is you talked initially about a tool that you were going to give to us at the end, and I'd love to know this kind of like a love bite or something that women can use and go out and <laughs> go out and try today. Something love practical. Bite. Yeah. Love, love by Okay. So the okay. As we talked about, all of this and what I promised in the very beginning, uh, the reaching out to men, signaling men, challenging men, mm -hmm. and celebrating men is rooted in your ability to do those really comes out of your self love. And so I'm going to share with you a self-love practice, encourage you to do this self-love practice, and then, um, and then issue a challenge for you as well. So the self-love practice is this. Lots of different self-love practices. This one I find works really well. And the more uncomfortable you feel doing this, the better, because that means you're stretching yourself. You're, you're stretching your comfort zone. Go in the mirror. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you do before you get naked and jump in the shower is to look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and speak the words I love you as you look into each eye and do this 20 times. So 10 I love you's for each eye. So you'd say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you up to 20 times. Then, um, and, and, and allow yourself to feel love for yourself and feel the love for yourself growing and building as you do that process. You might not feel anything the first time you do it. Allow whatever experience you have to be okay and just engage in the experience. Then as you move in through your day, anytime you see a mirror, which are you might walk by a storefront window and you'll see a reflection in the storefront. 
or you might walk by a, a, a mirror in the bathroom. You're washing your hands after using the bathroom. You're going to see yourself in the mirror. Anytime you see a mirror, your reflection, mm -hmm. say the words, I love you. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, how do I look right now? Or, ooh, how, you know, trying to move something around. Say, I love you. And send that. So let that be your trigger. And you're going to give yourself way more loving messages throughout the day than, than the chances are than you normally do. So the idea is to dial that up. Yeah. And then, as you're practicing this state of self-love, send love to men by signaling men in your daily life, whether it's online, if you're online dating, great, signal men, be the chooser, reach out to men that you wouldn't normally reach out to, right? Maybe a guy that you like, but ooh, you've been wanting him to reach out to you first. Be bold and reach out to him. And Men in your daily life, you might be in a car wash, getting your car wash, or you might be in a coffee shop, or you might be you know, somewhere out and about. Practice, my challenge to you is signal three men this week. Hmm. Signal three men in an obvious way to come over and talk to you. And do it for the experience of it. Don't do it for the fact of them coming over and talking to you. Do it for the growth of it. And you'll be amazed at how that results in in so much more in your life. That's, that's awesome. What a great challenge. I'm going to do it. Ladies out there, <laughs> I invite you to join me. And just one question about that. When you're saying I love you to yourself in the mirror, are you saying it out loud or silently? No, out loud. Okay, even if you're out. Okay, so if you're out washing oh, your hands. Sorry, and out, and about? out and about, you can say it silently. You can say it silently or you can even mouth the words. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I love that. But yeah. in your mirror, at home in your mirror in the morning, you want that to be out loud because the vocal cords actually signal the brain, the resonance signals the brain in a different way than when you actually don't speak it out loud. Okay, yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, and I don't know if we have time, there's one final story we could leave, like a little inspirational story. Sure, yeah, absolutely. We could leave people with. Um, you know, I, you know this woman, Marianne. Uh, well, I won't say her last name for privacy yeah. sake, but Marianne. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I just I love sharing her story because um, uh, it's just so inspiring and it's so amazing. This is a woman who spent thirty years in a convent and had had never been married and had a brace on her leg and all sorts of thoughts and beliefs. Like she's she was seventy two when I met her and saying, I'm too old for love, I'm, I missed my window for love in relationships. And maybe some of you feel that way, that you're divorced and you've been single for so long and now all the guys want younger women or they want, whatever the case is, there's all kinds of, of beliefs that we have. And so she was having those same beliefs, that I'm, I missed my window for love, I'm not good enough because I'm too old, because I have a brace on my leg, I'm not sexy enough, I don't have enough experience with men, I spent 30 years in a convent as a nun. And so we started doing work together. She started working on her self-love. She started signaling men, 72 years old, got herself online. And one of her dreams was when we would envision the kind of relationship that you want. She wanted a picture of what are some of the scenes that I would be doing if I'm in this relationship and build emotional resonance with those images. One of the images for her was dancing with her man to the song Lady in Red while she was wearing a red dress. And so she did the work, put in the time, took the effort, did, took the scary moves, got rejected, took more scary moves, grew herself, and ended up meeting a really nice, sprightly 82-year-old gentleman. Handsome, spunky, funny, and they started their relationship. He has a Corvette that they ride around, Wayne and Marianne, and he drives and he's got, you know, he's 82, she's 72, and they're having this great time. And she ends up coming to a retreat that we led. And the team set it up so that we, the, the last night of the retreat was this gala dinner dance. And um, she showed up at that gala in a red dress. And Wayne was there. And we all gathered around in a circle, and she's like, what's happening? What's going on? We said, no, just take the stage. And, and uh, so her and Wayne take the center of the stage, and then the sound guys play, start playing the song Lady in Red. And here she is at 72 years old, dancing with her beloved, who she had called into her life, 
and he, she is his beloved. And here they are holding each other, embracing to the song Lady in Red, living her dream. And I share that more. Everybody was crying and we were, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And what's even more amazing is, is really the message behind this is that it's never too late. It's never too late. It doesn't matter how long you've been single. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what your body style is. If you've got that desire for love, then love is seeking you right back. Mm. Your man is out there. He's looking for you right now. That that possibility is very, very, very real for you. And so I want to just encourage you. Good for you being on this call. Good for you watching this video because that shows that you believe in yourself. And so don't let that dream die. Because that dream can be very, very real for you. And here's to your lady in red moment, whatever that might be. Oh, I love that, Matt. I love that story. It is so beautiful. And it gives everybody really the vision that anything is possible. So, yeah, thank you so much for spending time with us today, for sharing your brilliance and your wonderful uh, suggestions and very practical things to put into place. As always, it has been a total pleasure to have you here with us. I hope you've gleaned some really great insights from Matt's miracle and his wisdom. The same is possible for you. Matt's miracle could absolutely be replicated for you. You don't have to live in California. You know, it doesn't just happen for people who live in Huntington Beach. It can happen for you, no matter where you live, no matter what your age, no matter what your circumstance. All you have to do is trust and believe in that power that resides within you that is waiting for you to tap into it and believe. If you're having a struggle with your self-love, really feeling worthy, I have a gift for you. I want to invite you to a workshop, a two-day workshop that I'm hosting next week where we are going to focus entirely on building self-love. And I would love you to join me. If that speaks to you, click on the link below and you will gain immediate access and information to that workshop. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us and believe in the miracle in you. Bye now.